What's up, Thrashers, and welcome back to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel. And it's time for episode number 8 of 5 Questions with Levi, where I get to answer questions from you guys who send me questions every single week in the comment section of the previous episode of 5 Questions with Levi. And last week's episode was a huge success, the 10 Questions edition to celebrate my 8th anniversary of being on YouTube. And it was a lot of fun. Though I still feel like I cause a lot of people's puberties uh, to really accelerate after talking about Zev Bellringer a lot last week. But luckily, no porn questions this time, so everyone will be safe. We're back to the usual stuff, pretty much. But nonetheless, before we get started, I have to say be sure to like this video, even though you're perfectly capable of doing that yourself. And for sure, leave a comment sending me a question for next week's episode. If you're new to this series and haven't asked me a question before, what are you waiting for? Send them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them for next week's episode, which will be episode number 9. But we got episode 8 this week. Let's do it. Okay, so the first question comes from Space Metal Ferrari 248 What's up, dude? What got you into Metallica in the first place? Well, could we play a little clip of what the song was that I first heard somewhere so yeah the first song I ever heard as a kid listening to Metallica was I Disappear looking back at it now it's one of their lesser songs but it's still an enjoyable listen to uh, every now and again but nonetheless, other than that, what got me into Metallica in the first place was my late great brother, Rue, rest in peace. Uh, he grew up listening to Metallica as a teenager, particularly the Black Album and Load and Reload eras of Metallica. He was more into like the more bluesy, traditional metal-based version of Metallica than the thrash stuff from the 80s, even though he liked a lot of the 80s stuff, he liked more of the Black Album, Load and Reload era. Um, but he had first turned me on, and I've told this story many times in the past, he first turned me on to stuff like Jay-Z and Eminem, but then when it came to rock and metal, uh, the first bands he introduced me to, or I've heard stuff from, was bands like Metallica, Van Halen, ACDC, stuff like that. And yeah, basically it was all because of my brother Rue, why I've become a metalhead still to this day, because he played me. Metallica for the first time in my life, so... Yeah. God, I really miss him so much. I really, really do. Next question comes from Grand Theft Auto WWE. With NASCAR and WWE having similar problems... Eh, debatable ratings and attendance. Why do you think fans are calling for the death of NASCAR within the next couple of years, but WWE fans praise wrestling that's never been better than before? Well, I wouldn't say that WWE fans praise wrestling like that. Depends on who you talk to, but uh, the reason why I feel like a lot of fans are calling the death of NASCAR within the next few years is just because of the state of the sport. You know, the ratings and attendance are at an all-time low. It's been getting worse and worse ever since COT days. Like, honestly, once NASCAR introduced the car of tomorrow, it has just snowballed from there, and it's just gotten worse and worse and worse as the years go by, to the point where now Brian France is having to probably sell his stock of the sport to somebody else. Depending on who buys it and what they're going to do with it, if it's, say, like a Vince McMahon situation where he buys it but doesn't do anything with it other than acquire the talent for his own show... If we were to get a situation like that, then NASCAR would be dead. But if we were to have a situation where they sell to somebody, a la uh, when Liberty Media, I believe it was, who bought Formula One last year and are still keeping it going, if we get a situation like that, then NASCAR should still be in good shape, pin depending on what these new owners are going to do, if they're going to run the sport better than Brian France, or at the bare minimum, listen to the fans and take our criticisms and look into things on, on how to fix them properly. But the reason why people are calling for the death of NASCAR is not only because of attendance and ratings, as well as how the cars are and the races being bad, but it's because of Brian France basically not coming out to say anything. It's his job to go out to the public and 
take questions, do press conferences, and answer questions. But instead, he lies to everyone and says that everything is great. When, clearly, everything sucks. Except for the Truck Series. Truck Series is always good. But nonetheless, Brian France needs to come out and just have a press conference, answer questions, and or admit that they have made mistakes with the cars and some of the tracks that they've made with the ISC or whoever does track designs like Kansas or whatever. I know there are some fans I might like NASCAR right now. However, those people, in my opinion, don't understand what really is good about racing. What was good about racing was how the cars were back then. No side force, no splitters, or any of that shit. And the format didn't suck back in the day. The format nowadays completely sucks. Now, before I go even more in detail in this, you can, if you want me to go more in detail in this, go check out my If I Became the Owner of NASCAR, What Would I Do video, and you would really understand. Um, but that's the reason why fans are calling for the death of NASCAR. WWE, on the other hand, they're always going to be in a safe place because the, unlike NASCAR, WWE is a publicly traded company where they don't run the company, the McMahon family don't run the company themselves. They got investors and other people, board of directors, and also they get all these sponsorship deals. And how do you think that by having a $1 billion television deal go through for Fox to have SmackDown on Fox and we might even get NXT on Fox Sports 1? Excuse me. NXT on Fox Sports 1? That goes to show you that WWE is in a good state, regardless of what is going on with the product. Like, I'll even say right now, I have not cared about Raw or SmackDown for about a few months now, pretty much. I see it on occasion, what's going on, but I'm to the point right now where I'm just going to stop watching Raw and SmackDown for a while, just focus on the pay-per-views, and maybe go back to talking about NXT. I don't know, especially when NXT UK comes up. In about a month, once that happens, I'm going to totally be talking about NXT UK. Kind of like what I used to do with NXT like five years ago. So, that's where the difference is. WWE's in a good state because they're a publicly traded company. NASCAR's in a bad state because they're not. That's why fans are calling for the death of NASCAR within the next few years. But WWE's still in pretty much tip-top shape, money-wise. Even though on screen it may not seem that way, they're they're not going anywhere. It's just the honest truth. Next question from my favorite name, Fat Fuck Behind a Burning Asshole. He returns. <laughs> I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I get the gist. It's okay if you ask me a lot of questions. I enjoy having your company on these shows. Um, anyways, he said his question. If NASCAR even survives this long... Who do you see as the next up and who? Bleh, I can't even speak English. <laughs> who do you see as the next up and coming star to get seven championships to tie Petty, Dale Senior, and Jimmy Johnson? To be quite frank, I don't think anybody's gonna really get to seven championships if the sport's gonna survive. I would say if anyone's going to pull it off out of the drivers in the sport today. The only ones who have any chance of that are the guys who have already been champions, like Harvick and Kyle Busch and Truex. I just don't see... With the talent pool we have in Cup right now, with what we've got right now, nobody's going to even come close to Petty or Senior or even Johnson. Even Johnson, I don't see him getting an eighth championship. If how he's been running last year and this year's any indication... I'm not saying I'm not just saying this because I am not the biggest Jimmy Johnson fan, but with how he's been running the last year and a half, I just don't see him getting an eighth championship. If he does, it'll be a miracle pulled straight out of his ass, like it was for about half of his championships. But with what we've got right now, with the majority of the racers nowadays being pay drivers who absolutely suck, there's not gonna be a chance in hell anybody's going to come close to Johnson, Dale Sr., or Richard Petty. I just don't see it happening. But if Austin Terriot were to get a cup ride, maybe he could do it, because I will argue that after last year, 
not this year because he's not in a ride, but last year, I could, I as well as a few other people would have considered Austin Terrio to be the greatest stock car driver in America in 2017. Some people may think that's a bit of a stretch. I can kind of see it, but you can't deny his stats last year in ARCA. Seven wins, including four in a row, 4.1 average finish, 14 top fives, 19 top tens over the course of 20 races. If you want further proof than that, go check out Kamikaze Games' video about Austin Terrio. He does a better job explaining it than I could. But yeah, I don't see a chance in hell anybody's going to come close. With the people we have now, it's not going to happen. Next question comes from BlazeLife334. What made you get into rock and metal music? Well, I kind of answered it a little bit ago with the Metallica question. It started with Metallica uh, through I Disappear as well as through my brother. But how I got into the rest of it kind of comes from many unorthodox places or orthodox places, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, of course, my parents were big classic rock fans, still are big classic rock fans, so they kind of turned me on to stuff like Steve Miller, Queen, um, all kinds of those bands, uh, Blue Oyster Cult, CCR, so many of those, so I got into some of theirs, got into listening to like the popular songs from them. Uh, but also through NASCAR Thunder 04, the soundtrack there, you had Avenged Sevenfold, Three Days Grace, Fuel, Sum 41, Iggy Pop, all that good shit. But also, WWE pay-per-view themes was a big part of how I got into it as a child. You know, like Metallica had theme music for WWE. You know, Mudvayne, Seethers, especially Saliva. Like, Saliva was all over WWF, WWE in the early to mid-2000s. They were just everywhere. So, and most of those bands kind of get associated with alternative metal slash post-grunge. And that kind of style of thing. So that was how I got into it originally. But then once I got into my preteen years, like 11, 12 years old, I started getting into other bands like Alice in Chains and Megadeth. And then by the time I turned into a teenager, I discovered Slayer, more listening to more Pantera and stuff like that. And also Guitar Hero played a big part in this as well. Um, and then I eventually got into Thrash. And then throughout my later middle school into early high school years getting into death metal and now that I'm approaching 24 I keep discovering stuff like just a few years ago I've been getting more into black metal or prog metal and now recently getting into like some doom metal death doom grindcore stuff and it's just continued to snowball from that point on and that's the beauty of being a rocker and metal guy is that you always discover stuff that you never heard before, and you'll eventually like it. Like recently, I got into the band Broken Hope, thanks to a countdown video I saw on YouTube, and now I've got that album Swamped and Gore coming in the mail soon, so that's going to be great. But yeah, basically how I got into rock and metal music was Metallica, WWE pay-per-view themes, video game soundtracks, and Avenged Sevenfold. That's basically all. <laughs> and then the last question for this episode comes from The Gaming Pedigree, which... Two baby faces in WWE right now do you think need a heel turn? Not counting Roman Reigns or Dean Ambrose. Well, damn, those are going to be my two picks. Um, well, I guess if you put them aside, really the only two guys that I can really think of right now that I would feel should turn heel would be Ty Dillinger, because ever since he's gotten up to the main roster and hasn't had much traction, and plus... They've been trying to tease a heel turn on house shows, and we don't know how that's gone. But perhaps Ty Dillinger needs to turn heel to give his character something fresh. And then probably the bigger example would be someone like Bobby Roode. I mean, he's got to be over with the crowd regardless what you do with him, because Glorious is going to reign supreme. However, character-wise, as a babyface right now... He's just not really gone anywhere after his U.S. title win. After that, he's just been kind of... I mean, yeah, he was in the Money in the Bank match last month, but that was about it. Plus, he apparently lost to Mojo Raleigh at a house show last week, so if you lose to someone like Mojo Raleigh as a babyface, then perhaps it's time to turn Bobby Roode heel. After all, he's better as a heel anyways. His in-ring ability comes off better as a heel. Its promos come off better as a heel. Plus, the gimmick is a heel gimmick. 
You know, just go full-blown heel with Bobby Roode, and I guarantee he'd be one of the top heels on Raw. So, that's basically my thoughts on that. And that does it for episode number eight of Five Questions with Levi. God, this was the longest Five Questions episode, not counting last week. Then again, I went pretty much into detail on a couple of questions because they were just so broad. But uh, nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching, but be sure to send in questions in the comments section below for next week's episode, episode number nine. Thank you all so much for keeping this series alive. Peace out, and I will see you soon.